What's up everybody, this is Adam with Everyday Retro Gaming. Hopefully you're doing well and finding the games you're looking for. And I want to go over Descent for the PlayStation 1 in this retro review. I have a lot of fond memories of playing this back on the PC, back in the DOS days. Um, my gosh, we played the heck out of this game. It was so different compared to Doom and all those other dispersed version shooters where you're just stuck on the ground. Having that 360 movement was awesome. I believe we only had like the shareware version where we only had like up to like the first boss. So when I did see this back in the day on the PlayStation 1, I never wanted to pick it up. It's like, well, I played it on PC. It would control a lot better on PC, look better. But overall, they ported it over pretty good. The controls are a little bit weird to get used to, and there is some major frame rate drops. But overall, it's still a pretty fun experience. So let's get into the review, and if you have this in your collection, let's see if it's worth a playthrough. Descent story isn't too deep. You play as a mercenary badass hired by some evil mining corporation to destroy all their mining robots that have gone rogue due to some alien super hacker. That's a good enough reason for me to go around blowing up bots. Descent gives you that six degrees of freedom to feel as nauseated as possible. When you first start up Descent, give yourself some time to get used to the controls. The D-pad is used for aiming and the right buttons are used to move forward and straight. It is compatible with the PS1 joystick if you still have one of those sitting around. Each stage is a maze of quarters where you need to collect three colored keys, blue, yellow, and red. Once you get the red and final key, you need to plan your path to the exit door because as soon as you take out the reactor, the whole mine goes up with or without you inside. The level design does the job that it was meant to do, and that is to get you lost and confused. Good thing there's a wireframe map that you can plan your path and see where you need to explore next. Descent has plenty of weapons to take out your enemies. I'm not sure which one is the best, but I always seem to default back to the fully upgraded lasers. To swap weapons, you need to hold down select and press L1, which makes changing weapons in a firefight pretty difficult. It's best just to stick with your favorite weapon. I tend to be one of those people that hoard special weapons and never use them, even on the final boss. Don't be afraid to spam regular or homing missiles as you do get plenty of them throughout the stages. Keep the mega and smart missiles though, for when you need them. If you're lucky enough to have a friend, two PlayStation 1s, and two copies of Descent, and a link cable, well, you're in for some crazy deathmatch or co-op action. I hope you like rock or industrial techno because you're going to get a ton of it. Descent definitely sounds like it comes out of the 90s, which isn't a bad thing. I feel like a few songs would fit perfectly in a Command & Conquer game. Overall, the music fits the game and there are very few songs I feel could have been left out. The sound effects are well done and fit the overall feel of the game. I really enjoy the first boss as he has a unique sound that is a bit unnerving as he could just show up anywhere. Once you start to learn what sounds each robot makes, you'll be a little bit more prepared to fight whatever is around the corner. For a PlayStation 1 game, it looks pretty dang good. Overall, the textures are decently detailed, even if repetitive. The sprites for the people you have to rescue are the only graphics I feel are really out of place, possibly because they are 2D. The HUD is simple and provides you with information you need quickly. Most of the time, the game runs at a steady frames per second, but right when the action gets going and those frames are sorely needed, they drop. And they drop hard. I do find it annoying, but not enough to say the game is completely unplayable. If this game is in your collection, set aside 15 to 20 hours and have a dedicated memory card ready, because I feel like this game is worth a playthrough. Alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed this retro review. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to see more of this content. I hope you all find the games you're looking for. Stay retro, stay safe, and have a good one. Later.